Good afternoon, everyone. Can I please have a quick sound check? If you could please type a one in the chat box if you can hear me. And also, if you could see the share screen, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much, guys. All right, I see that there are still a lot of traders logging in right now. Okay. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. <laughs> Zero one. <laughs> okay, awesome. <laughs> All right, everyone, let's get started. We have a packed um, session for today, and I hope that the takeaway is going to be scaling it and out of trades. Uh, I'm also going to share with you a trade uh, from last night. For those of you that have attended last night's class, you left with about five to seven hundred dollars uh, takeaway from the class last night. All right, so welcome everyone. Uh, by the way, this session is recorded. There were some issues with uh, the recording from yesterday, but uh, the Zoom team is working on it and they are going to process it. It will be available probably by the end of the trading session of the trading day today. If not, it will be ready by tomorrow evening. Don't forget that this is a three day event. You have used the link from yesterday's. Uh, session to log into today. Uh, however, keep in mind that for tomorrow, there is a separate registration link. So you guys are going to, thank you so much, Peter. Uh, you guys are going to have to log into my trading room tomorrow with my members. Okay. So that is a separate link. So welcome everyone. Thank you so much for your interest in futures trading. I love trading futures and I love sharing everything that I do with uh, with you guys. All right, let's get started. For those of you that were not here with me yesterday, my name is Anka Metcalf and I'm the CEO and founder of TradeOutloud.com, which is a trading education firm that is specialized in educating individuals how to day trade and swing trade and actively invest the futures and the equities markets. And by the way, I, I trade Forex as well. So I, ha I actually have a trade in the Euro. Actually, I closed it in the euro, but uh, I don't think I have the slide here uh, ready for you. But uh, in two weeks, we're going to be doing another webinar based. It's going to be strategy based. It's going to be also a free webinar and uh, I'm going to send out the invites and I'm going to include those setups uh, that uh, are working on higher time frames, on currencies, on futures, on everything. And I love to trade. And by the way, I was trading. So I was trading the euro long. And I actually made this call public on my Twitter account. So if you go under trade out under twitter.com forward slash trade out loud and you scroll through pictures, that's where you're going to find it. Uh, it's it has a chart of the euro and I am pointing out the entry, the stop and the targets. Okay. So you can, uh, you can do that. Uh, Stefan, I did not do live trading. Uh, and that is scheduled for tomorrow from nine o'clock until four o'clock. Hopefully we're not going to have a day like today and it's going to be a little bit more active. Um, but I did mention a trade, uh, in gold last night because it was just staring in our face. We were doing some chart reviews and yes, I called the trade live at the end of the presentation last night. All right, so I have been doing this for a very long time, uh, 16 years active in the market, like on a day-to-day -day basis, morning till 4, 35, 6, 7 o'clock at night. Uh, the thing with trading is that this is not, and we talked about this yesterday, it's not an eight-hour job. Uh, it's more of a lifestyle. So you put alerts where your interest zone is, whether to buy or to short, uh, and you pretty much your whole life gravitates around, around trading. Okay. Um, prior to becoming a professional independent trader, I come with 10 plus years in investment banking. And I'm the designer of an institutional proprietary trading system because I was a proprietary trader and I took their model and I applied it for my own trading account uh, and account size. 
And uh, my system is based on the seven layers of price support resistance. And it makes a lot of sense because we have a lot of algo trading going on in the market right now. In fact, 85% of the market volume is algorithmic trading. I also have specific trigger times throughout the trading day. I'm very focused on uh, in the morning. I have three precise trigger times that I follow, 9.35, 9.45, and 10.30. These are the times when I'm looking to buy or to short an index or a commodity. I'm also focused on specific price zones. This is something that is very unique and something that institutional traders are looking at. And this is something that is proprietary. And like I said, I'm only teaching this in class, but there are four price points in uh, stocks in futures and especially in currencies and futures where price responds either prone to buying pressure or prone to selling pressure these four price points can be used to initiate trades can be used for targets and they're extremely accurate and very helpful and when they are lining up with uh, other elements of support resistance from charts uh, other confluence zones, sort of say, uh, they're extremely, extremely powerful. I also am uh, very keen on uh, trading in synchronicity with, uh, uh, with the market. So I want the perfect alignment, and I don't take a trade if I see anything that is divergent in the market. Uh, I want to have, and because I do actively day trade the future indices, this is what I do. I trade the future indices aggressively every single day, aggressively. Don't think that if I'm mentioning aggressive, I'm literally trading uh, possibly, I don't know, maybe five, seven, 10 trades a day. No, one to three trades a day and that's it. And that's what I call aggressive because you have to be super focused and your trade has to line up my trade. My trade has to line up with the confluence zone, has to line up with the specific time uh, of the day with the market tempo has to line up with us uh, uh, with a, a, a synchronized market and with a specific uh, with a specific price zone if the price is not there and uh, even though we are at a trigger time I'm gonna wait for the next setup to uh, come up in the market uh, Gordon it is 935 945 and 1030 all right let me explain a little bit because if you guys are interested in these times, let me sh share with you why these times are. They're not just random time frames. 9.35 represents the first minor reversal time in the market. So when the market opens, you're gonna get a shift, whether to the upside or to the downside. Is that fleecy? In a very strong market environment, if uh, the price trades above the five minute high, it may enter into a buy prone zone at 935 uh, if it trades below the 935 low so you consider the open from 9 to 935 those five minutes are incredibly important for the market when the market is trending these timings are extremely precise in a sideways market obviously in a market like today you're not going to see them work because you have a range bound market. 9.45 represents the first, actually the second, sorry about that, it represents the second minor reversal time in the market. If you have the price that is shooting higher right from the open, out of the gates, you have the runaway price. And we had that example, uh, was it on Monday? Uh, I, I'm not really sure, I think, was it on Monday when we had a uh, runaway price? And it would just zip higher, right? And we had that last week as well. Now, when this happens, you pr your hands are pretty much tied up. You can't do anything. I'm not going to just jump into a trade. I have to wait for a setup. Why is the setup very important? Because the setup is providing you the key levels to your future uh, to your future trade. And that means that you decide your entry, you decide where your risk is, your stop is, your position size for that trade, and then you establish your targets. Okay, so it's very important. By simply uh, just uh, um, jumping into a trade, you don't have those parameters. So you have no idea what size to use, 
what are you going to position size to? To the low. What low? What if the market is, and I mean, we've seen NASDAQ up 160 points. After NASDAQ is up, I don't know, maybe 130 points and you decide to go long, you really have to have a very good solid support zone and a reason good enough for you to get into a trade. All right, so um, 9, 945 represents that balancing. So if the market is very choppy and very whippy and typically if it's sideways within the first 15 minutes, you're going to witness either a breakout or a breakdown from that 15 minute price action at the New York trading session open. The last and my favorite trigger time in the market is 1030. By 1030, you have one hour of market activity and most of the best setups are developed around 1030. So if you, uh, try to resist the urge to get in trades very early in the morning, you're going to see, so from 9.30 to about 10.30, you're gonna have better odds if you're getting in a trade at 10.30, you have more confirmation. If, and if the market is strong, it usually climbs from 9.30 to 10 o'clock, and it usually pulls back from 10 o'clock to, 10, uh, to 10.30, or 10.15 to 10.30. You're either gonna have about, a uh, 15 minute, 20 minute of uh, a pullback or 30 minute pullback into 1030. At 1030, if you don't, if the, uh, if the index or commodity is not visiting the prior low and it's somehow into a 25 to 50% retracement, any rotation off of that point is going to carry the price higher into the high of 10 o'clock and further higher for, th uh, for the duration of the day. All right. I hope this makes sense. This is a little parenthesis here because I didn't just want to throw out the, the times of the market and then not tell. And of course, there are times for, and uh, there are other explanations. There are trigger times that are happening in the doldrum period, and there is a different strategy uh, when you trade the lunchtime period. And then there is a separate strategy in different trigger times that occur in the afternoon trading session. And I like to balance everything out. So I, the reason why I take very few trades is because I don't have many trades that are lining up with my guidance. Um, I also have a strict set of trading rules that I apply every single day. And we talked about some of these trading rules uh, last night. And I also have a 10 point scoring system before I actually get into any trade. So they, my index or commodity has to fulfill each and has to pretty much, we have to have a check mark uh, uh, with uh, a check mark, uh, basically with everything, uh, all, all these points have to be fulfilled in order to get a trade. No, it's 932, Dan. Nine, I'm sorry, it's 935, not 932. It's 935. First five minutes of, uh, first five minutes of price. Uh, with crude, um, also, yeah, absolutely. So you, you can use this, uh, this timing with, uh, with crude, with heating oil, uh, not so much with the uh, copper natural gas, okay? So you can use this, this timing uh, with the dollar, with the euro. You can use it for crude, for gold, et cetera. Okay, let's move on, guys. Today, uh, scanning and selecting the instrument to trade. Uh, we will be talking about day trading and swing trading timeframes. Uh, also, my trading rules and uh, scaling in and out of trades. Also, the indicators that I use. You guys are pretty familiar uh, from yesterday with what indicators I use, but we're going to highlight them again. And of course, we're going to wrap up the session with Q&A. All right. So um, basically, I wanted to start with this. So if you missed yesterday's live webinar, you just left $500 minimum per contract on the table. All right. So at the end of the, uh, at, yesterday we had a little bit longer presentation because I did have tons of questions and we pretty much had a two hour webinar, but it, it's my pleasure to, to speak to you and it's my pleasure to answer all your questions because, and trust me, when it comes to trading, there is no silly question, so feel free to post any questions you may have here. Um, been trading for a long time and uh, trust me, I'm pretty much certain that I have an answer for you. Okay, so uh, this is gold. When gold was trading, I hope you guys can see my cursor. Uh, last night when, uh, when we started the class, uh, the, uh, the webinar, uh, gold was trading below. Let me see if I can 
no, I can't move this. Let me, let me see if I could get this here. Okay. So you guys can see the chart. Okay. Let me just go to the one hour. All right. Let me zoom in a little bit here. All right. Here we go. Here we go. All right. So you guys can see the price. Okay. So you can see here that we were looking at a breakout and the breakout that we were looking at was into this 13, uh, uh, 1335 level. This is where we wanted to buy this. This was a too much, this was too aggressive for us into the 1332 level because the gold was still trading into resistance. Let's see if I can shrink this so you guys can see it. You can see the resistance here into the 1335, right? So we wanted to make sure that gold clears that resistance and it's passing through those levels uh, with no, uh, no more obstacles into the 40s and 42s. And in fact, these were the two targets that I mentioned, the 40 and the 42. Uh, Satin, yes, the screen is being shared. Do you guys see the screen? Quick question. Can you please uh, let me know if you guys can see the screen? Okay, perfect. You're still show. Log out and log back in. Log out and log back in. All right, guys. Okay, so we took the breakout here into the 1335, and I mentioned the targets into 40 and 42. This is the trade right here. These are the parameters, entry 1335, stop 1330, target into uh, 1340 and 1342. It hit both, both targets. So if you were by trailing, if you still wanted to be in the trade, you would have uh, uh, you would have closed the trade with five hundred dollar profit, right? When it's at forty two, obviously lock in your first target level, right? So it's a no brainer, five hundred bucks. You lock it in. Or if you want to go for maximum target, forty two was hit, bam, done. This is a chart that I shared with my traders, and this is from my trading account. I share with you guys my trading account. I told you what I do with my trading account. Uh, not a lot of traders do that, but I did. So you can see my fill. I because here's the thing, we, the price started to blast higher and I wanted to make sure that all of my traders get into the trade, right? So here I am, I'm typing for in my uh, private Twitter feed because we do have a private Twitter feed that goes outside of the trading room hour. So because trading is a 24 hour activity and because I actively trade the markets and this is what I do Monday through Friday, right? This is my job as a trader, right? Because this is an income producing and I want to pay my bills. So because... We, are, uh, we were talking about this setup. I received my alert on my phone. I started typing on my phone. And by the way, everything was set up on my phone because I wasn't even at home. So you don't have to be at home. You don't have to be in front of the computer in order to take these trades. So I got my alert on my phone. I quickly logged into my uh, brokerage account. I saw where the price is. And uh, before I actually hit the buy button, the limit buy to put in my limit buy at uh, 13, uh, 1335, I wanted to make sure that all my traders are getting into the trade. So I tweeted the, uh, tweeted the trade, the 1335 level, uh, and uh, all the parameters and everything, including the chart. And this chart, uh, uh, I, I also tweeted this chart last night so my traders can see when I'm into a trade, right? It's the proof in the pudding, right? Otherwise, why would I call a trade? And believe me, there are services out there. They're just spitting out trades. <laughs> uh, Steph, what time it was last night? Uh, I have to check my Twitter account. I think it was like, I don't know, 10 o'clock, 10, 1030. It was around 1030 at night. I have to check my, check my Twitter account. Stefan, yeah, check my Twitter account. Um, Okay, so yeah, and it remind me, I can show you the exact timing and everything. So yeah, all righty, so let's continue. So yeah, it was a very fruitful, and if we have any trade setups by the end of the trading session today, uh, not trading session, see, I'm so used to the trading room. I'm only used to trading uh, with, my, with my traders. And besides, we haven't had an open house since last August, and that's because I'm so busy trading all the time and I don't really don't have a lot of time <laughs> to, uh, to host a lot of events and especially this year. Ron, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay. So yeah, I was not sleeping at that time. I mean, who's going to be, who's sleeping when you receive an alert when you can make money, right? Thank you so much, Ron. Okay. So what do I trade and what is my trading universe? Okay. Basically I focus hundred percent on the futures indices because this is the core of the market, right? Stock market, you know, you're, if you're watching the stock market, you're watching the market of breath, 
Uh, they all look at the future indices for correlation, right? If you want to trade out on a Lululemon, by the way, Lululemon had earnings uh, today. But anyways, if you're trading Apple, what are you going to do? You're going to look at the market and you're looking at the indices to see whether it, it has relative strength or relative weakness to the market, right? Uh, to the Na to NASDAQ, I'm sorry, to NASDAQ or uh, obviously, why am when you're looking at when you're looking at financials, right? And if financials are strong, you're pretty much going to have a strong S and P because S and P is financial rich. So because I only trade these four charts right here, this is my Dow, this is the S and P, this is Nasdaq, and this is Russell. It's really hard to miss a setup. My focus in my day trading is basically from the first in, in the first two hours in the morning. That is my bread and butter. Okay, because I want to watch and I want to see what's happening. That's the most, that's where the institutional participation is. That's where they are uh, throwing money into the market, whether to buy or they're pulling out of the market and they're shorting. And that is the most active time in the market. Usually the afternoon trading session is uh, a little bit slower at times and, uh, and especially in sideways market, it has uh, it, uh, it, it's not a committed market either to the upside or to the downside, just like today. Okay. So you don't get that push to the, you don't have that reason. And first of all, you need a catalyst in order for the market to move higher or lower today. We didn't have that catalyst. We had just some CPI numbers at 830. the market gyrated a little bit, and then it's set in the range again. Uh, tomorrow, again, we don't have a lot of uh, economic releases. The big doozy is going to come next week, right? We have F1C on Wednesday. It's the rate decision, uh, press con followed by the press conference. So that's at 2 o'clock. The press conference is at 2.30. And then, uh, and then we have option expiration. I mean, it's going to be a crazy end of the week. I'm expecting a pretty choppy Monday, Tuesday, or either a run up or a, uh, or a run down. Uh, you don't know if we're going to get a rate cut, if you're going to get, uh, you know, what's going to happen. And definitely the meeting projection has already started. And uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 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 starts on Tuesday. And uh, it's, it, it's going to be a big deal. All right. So the talk next week is going to be all about, uh, all about the uh, rate cut uh, and uh, uh, rates. And that's pretty much it. I also have two charts here, and this is gold and um, uh, crude oil right here, CL. This is GC and CL. And by the way, guys, we're going to talk today about micros and how amazing it is to trade micros. And believe me, I have a considerable trading size account, and I love to trade micros because especially at night, you really don't want to have, you don't really want to be overly exposed in the market, you want to use maybe quarter of a position, maybe half of a half a position. Why? Because you want to sleep well at night, right? Do you think I took the trade last night? So I had my entry, I had my stop list, I had my uh, my uh, target set. I had a little bit of issue with, but that's brokerage side. But anyways, so I had my target set with my take profit, and I go to bed. Okay, and I went to bed. I slept like a baby all night because, first of all, I used only half of my risk size in the overnight trading session. That's my rule in the overnight trading session. I only take half, right? Because I'm sleeping. I'm not gonna. I'm not even setting alerts overnight to see. Oh, okay. So let's see. Let's check the chart. No, it's it's all or nothing in the overnight trading session. It either works or it doesn't work. And then we're gonna review everything in the morning. That's it. Okay, so you can see that if you're focused on only four charts, four mini indices, four day trading, and only two charts here in gold and oil. And by the way, gold and oil are great for day trading as well, but it, they did not really set up for my kind of strategy. Okay, so for my trading plan lately, they have been really choppy and really um, out, of, out of my comfort zone. All right, let's continue. These are just some very quick examples. By the way, guys, my traders love uh, uh, to send me uh, snapshots of their portfolio, snapshots of their uh, charts, where they got in, where they got out, uh, and they love to share this with me almost on a daily basis. On a, and I'm, t I'm not kidding you guys. I'm getting at least um, 10 or 12 uh, emails from my members every single day, okay? So if you have sent me an email last night, requesting something or asking for the recording 
uh, we just have to get to that email because we have just received like hundreds of emails uh, from last night's event. So this is a quick example of the kind of strategies that you can expect that we teach and we also take into the trading room. So we, uh, these are, this is a pullback buy uh, with a rotation that carry the price higher. And this is the kind of, and by the way, this is with only one contract right here. So it's from um, a beginner trader. And this is actually one of my trader, Travis, that uh, actually took the class uh, in February. And, um, He's very excited. He's going to be here. Uh, he's he's going to be with us next week for the first time live on the re retake live. Uh, but he's with us in the trading room. So uh, this is uh, this is his PNL right here uh, on the day. He has a small trading account, so you can see that you can make money whether you have a small trading account or a medium trading account. By the way, you can trade crude. You can trade mini crude as well, which is about half the size of the regular contract. So if you see a trade that is developing in the overnight trading session. Don't forget that these minis and micros exist for other types of uh, instruments, right? For gold, uh, for copper, for natural gas, for uh, uh, for oil, for crude, obviously. So not only for uh, not only for indices, right? Um, given the price level, it is over this Doji high right here over this doji high so it was probably uh yeah th this is it i think 53 53 18 is above this uh this high i could see here a 52 20 oh, i'm sorry 50 what is it no i'm sorry um let me show you an example here okay let me show you an example here of a buy setup so because it it's covered the price is covered all right so this is a sell setup right here you could see it Okay, you could see it right here. So we, ha you have the real, you have the very small, shallow pullback. Uh, you have the rotation, trading below the twenty SMA, taking out the prior candle low. Okay, so if this candle low, uh, let's say is uh, fifty three, uh, fifty three forty four, then your trigger is uh, uh, is uh, two cents below, two to three cents below it. Okay. So this is this is a good example of a sell setup right here. This is also a sell setup. It is uh, it is an inverse uh, hammer into the 50 SMA with a sell setup developing under the 50% retracement. So this this would be a sell. This is a sell right here. Okay, and this is a four hour base. It could be a two minute base or uh, or whatever base. But definitely, you see where my cursor is. The entry is above this doji high, above, above this doji high right here. So with one contract snapped up, 240 bucks. Medium account size. So if you have an account size 35,000 and up, uh, you can definitely uh, use more 30, 40,000 dollars. You could use uh, 10 contracts, 2,200 dollars on this trade. And it's only one trade. Uh, when we take a trade, we uh, I usually line up like, all the technicals and that's one of the reasons why I don't trade a lot I trade one two three trades and today we actually are in a long and we took the long this morning it hit target so fast we had uh, we had YM long at 35 26 35 in the trading room and we had target into 26 uh, 26 80 and uh, 26, uh, 26, 100, it went so fast up, I'm still in the trade. I, I never had a chance to, uh, never ch had a chance to lock in. And before I got into a trade, I didn't send my OCO order to take profit. So anyways, I'm still in the trade. So I'm considering right now as a swing. And if tonight it's going to trade over 26, 100, then I'm looking for a rip to the upside into the 150, maybe 200 and back into the 250 yesterday's high. All right, so let's move on. Uh, this is another example. And uh, anyways, these are a little bit choppier examples, but hey, the market is not always nice and smooth. And I also like to include in my, uh, in my manual, in my trading manual uh, that I teach my traders, setups that are not textbook. And what does that mean is that it trains your eye to look for the needle in the haystack because not every day is perfect. When you go to and open a technical analysis book, what do you see? Textbook buys, textbook sells, textbook bases, textbook, everything is textbook. Well, guess what, newsflash, the market is not textbook, 
okay? And you're gonna have, we're, uh, we are trading in a news-driven market. Uh, today, there was an influx of news, especially around, around lunchtime like never before. Uh, and uh, the market was very unstable at that point. It was going up and then down and then up and then down. It was like all over the place within the range, within the range that it was trading in. Okay. So I promise that I will share with you day trading and swing trading timeframes. And I know many of you guys in here are day traders, but I'm telling you the money and the real money is definitely in a lot of swing trades. Why? Because when you're day trading, you're committing to trades out to the upside or to the downside, and uh, you are committing to uh, tighter stops, and you're committed to the fact that you want to have a small risk and you wanna have at least two times your risk level in order to consider that trade before even getting in. If it has a one-to-one -one level risk to reward ratio, and if you see that the, uh, that your target is right into a resistance level and that's a one R, that, that is a wash trade. I don't take those kind of trades, okay? I, I don't, I, I just, I, I could care less about those trades. So I let the trade rip to the upside if it's in an uptrend, and then I let it set up again to, uh, to try to recalibrate a little bit to provide me with a better target, at least two to one or three to one. Other than that, I'm not, I'm not taking the trade. Uh, it's a disaster for your trading account to start going with a one-on-one one -on -one Rs because the problem is that you're going to risk on one trade. Let's say you're going to risk, I don't know, maybe you're risking $500 on a trade. You take a trade, you miss it, uh, and you are losing $500. The second trade that you take, you take it with $500 and um, ticks versus Take, not sure I understand ticks versus candles. Oh, you mean, Angela, can you explain? A wash trade is basically a trade that has a one-on-one -on -one risk to reward ratio. The bottom line is that if you, if you uh, use the same risk amount, and this is the key to, this is the a holy grail to trading, if you will. You have to use the same risk amount on each and every single trade. If you don't use the same risk amount on, uh, uh, on every single trade, your portfolio is going to be all over the place. It is very important because like I said before, if you take a trade and lose, if you take a trade and make uh, and lose 500, you take the second trade and lose 500, you take the third trade and make 500, right? That is one R that covers you for only one trade, for only one losing trade instead of two. You, you see what I'm saying? And that's why you have to go for two to one because if your third trade has a good risk to reward ratio that has to be expressed on the chart, not your desire to make twice the amount, but the chart has to accommodate that for you, okay? The chart has to have that tradable void. Okay, because if it's hitting resistance, it's triggering and hitting resistance, you know, wishful thinking is not going to get your, uh, your trade to your, uh, to your target. Okay, so for day trading, I, in volatile market conditions, or it, when, I have run, uh, when I have a runaway market, which means that if the price is exploding to the upside right from the open or is imploding right from the open, meaning a screaming higher or plummeting lower, I use the tick chart because I want to see secondary entry opportunity with tighter with tighter risk. Okay, so I use this tick chart five one two. I'm not getting anywhere closer to the uh, to any kind of any kind of tick. Okay, so I'm using the tick uh, chart for. Uh, I'm using the tick chart when I'm extremely extremely aggressive. I haven't used the tick chart, for instance. I don't know, since the beginning of the year, okay? So this is something that I don't use every day. I only use in volatile market environment, period, okay? In other market conditions, I use the one, two, and 15 minute charts, okay? Because you usually have nice pullbacks on the one and the two, plus the one and two respond really well with the strategy that I teach from the 935, and the 945, right? Remember those trigger times in the market, right? 9, 935, 945, and 1030. At 1030, I immediately go to my 15 minute chart, okay? So I navigate away. So when you trade, and when I trade, I don't know how you guys do it, but when I trade, 
in the morning, I'm focused on very small time frames, one, two. And then as I navigate into 10 o'clock, I focus on five. I navigate to the 15 once I'm getting closer to 1030. And then I stay on the 15 minute time frame till two o'clock because you're entering the doldrum phase. If you have been trading for a while and you have been stopping out of trades between 1030 and between two o'clock, it's because you're not lining up with your time, your time frame with your market tempo and you're getting shaken out of trades. And then after two o'clock, I go back, I zoom into some smaller time frames such as five minute, et cetera. Today was an unordinary day because we have a sideways market. And today we were trading off the four hour chart. So you have to know, this is what we teach you in class. Okay, and this is where you get that empowerment to know what time frame to trade because there were a lot of traders that got killed in today's market, got killed because it was a sideways market. They went long, they got stopped out. They went short, they got stopped out. Okay, so you have to know how to line up your um, time frame according to the chart internals, according to how the pattern is setting. And that's why you have to know how to use multi-time frame analysis and also know how to navigate on a specific time frame. It is very rare and on rare occasions do I day trade off the four hour chart, okay? But again, this is the, uh, this is the exception to the rule just as we're using the tick chart for a high volatility market environment, we're using this. For swing trading, for swing trading, I'm using the one hour, the four hour, the daily, the weekly, and of course the monthly at times, right? Which makes sense. I don't know if you guys are uh, subscribed to my YouTube uh, channel, but I put a free, absolutely free, no cost video, and some traders charge you for that. I've seen a trader that charges 200 bucks for a weekend video, okay? Just for a weekend video, that's it. Okay, market analysis, 200 bucks. Uh, I provide this for free for everyone, and this is my market bias and what I, uh, how I see the market progress within the week, okay? Uh, I've made some calls there. I, we talked also about natural gas. Natural gas is resting right now on the 78.6, and it had a strong reaction off of that fit. If you think that you like to swing trade, you buy it because that's a buying prone area. It's also a really strong confluence zone right here aligned with the FIB, okay? So it gives you much more confidence and conviction that that's gonna be a decision for natural gas. Also for, uh, for copper, I gave some ideas for, um, uh, for corn and for wheat. Uh, I also mentioned bonds and, uh, other, uh, and other commodities. All right. So my 15 trading rules, number one, I never trade the news. I go outside, I go for a walk, I go for a swim, I do anything else but sit through news. That's one of the reasons why I don't trade at 8.30 a.m. because I have a big influx of news that is coming in and I am stepping away from the noise. To me, news is just a brief interruption in the trend. You're gonna see wick, 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 it's gonna confuse everybody, right? It's a CED day. Confuse everybody day. And uh, when I come back and everything is all said and done at around nine o'clock, and when I do my pre market analysis, that's fine. Okay. So I'm stepping outside of the news area. I do not trade crude inventory numbers ahead of uh, crude, uh, I do not t trade crude oil ahead of oil inventory numbers. I do not trade natural gas ahead of natural gas numbers. I do not trade the FOMC meetings. I don't. I sit here, I watch and wait. I'm, uh, if I'm in swing trades, I watch my swing trades develop, okay? Um, and uh, I'm not calling trades that, that day. Uh, if you're a beginner trader, watch, because you have to watch and see what's going on in FOMC. I haven't missed an FOMC meeting ever, okay? Just do chores around the house and you know, glance at charts and whatever, because you need to train your eye to what's happening in the market. And next time when you have an FOMC meeting, you're going to memorize and you're going to know. 
And you're going to remember what happened in 2008, what happened in 2010, what happened in 2013 with all the QEs and everything, and what happens now with the rate hike and the uh, 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 with uh, with uh, um, uh, with the rate decision and everything else. So you you have to in order to be a complete trader, you need to you need to have traded for at least three years. When I started trading, my mentor told me told me that hey, you're gonna be a complete trader in about three years, and I'm like, I've got this. Can't you see I'm making money? And he's like, yeah, you're making money, but you're going to be a complete trader in about three years because you have to develop the skills and you have to go through three market cycles, three years, three cycles in order to be a complete trader. Because you have to be aware when the news is coming, what, how it is affecting the price and all that uh, sort of stuff. And I totally agree. Even if you're a great trader, if you're just starting trading right now and you're a great trader, and with all the information out there, you have no reasons why you should not be an excellent trader. Okay. When I started trading, there was no Twitter, there was no Facebook, there were no groups, there was nothing. Okay. And basically when I made the switch and when I became a retail trader, just like you guys, um, I joined a trading room, which was $600 a month because you don't want to trade alone. Okay. It's better when you have a group of people that are keeping tabs on the market, right? A hundred eyes are better than two eyes. Isn't that right? Okay. Same with my trading room. Maybe I'm not seeing a setup and maybe a trader in my trading room. One of my students identifies a pattern that I've probably missed, right? And he's typing it in the room. Hey, just a heads up. Look at that chart or look at that pattern. Okay. And that's how, you know, that's how we make money in the trading room. I never jump in trades. Never, never, ever, ever, never jump in trades. I never chase a trade. I never over trade. When I'm up at least two times my risk level, so if my risk level is, I don't know, $1,000, and if I'm up $2,000 on that day, two times my risk, okay, and in the morning, I decide to take only one more trade and only if the a uh, uh, technical image on that specific trade is picture perfect. I allow myself always three trades a day. So it means that when I know what my budget is for the week, I divide it by five and I know what my trading, uh, what my trading um, capital is for the specific day. And I divide that by three. Those are my three bullets, okay? Those are my three chances to make money in the market on a specific day. I vo avoid emotional attachment to trades, okay? I don't trade on hope. Uh, I ignore all the water cooler chatter when I am trading. Everything, I ignore everything. I, I, I cannot be influenced by anything, okay? I could care less if, uh, I don't know, I hear an analyst on CNBC saying that he's, uh, I don't know, um, um, I don't know, bullish on crude. If I'm bearish, I maintain my opinion on it because I have the confidence. Confidence comes from uh, knowledge. And I have the market knowledge to take my own decisions. I'm empowered. I have the keys to the kingdom. Okay? I have the, this market knowledge. Is, uh, uh, market knowledge is your key or your keys to your kingdom. I increase my trading size when it, uh, only when I have an accumulation of at least 15% in my account, okay? That's when I increase my position size. Most of the time, like I said yesterday, I'm not increasing my size anymore because I'm at a level where I have my account size and every month I pull in my profits and I just leave my account at the original size. On May 6th, um, and that is about a little bit, uh, a little over a month ago, the CME group has launched the micro minis. I think this is one of the best things that could have ever happened to the market. I received some emails from the CME group mentioning that the volume is outstanding. The participation is amazing to these uh, micro contracts. The volume is amazing on these, uh, on these contracts. Uh, this gives all retail traders a way to participate in the equities index futures markets. Okay. You can grow a small 
size account. I have students that have grown their size account right now in the last three to four years. And uh, they're in the trading room with me. They're trading every single day with me in the trading room. They have been with me for a very long time. And uh, they're, they're, they're doing the same thing that I'm doing right now. They're pulling money. They're pulling just a profit out of the market. Why? Because day trading accounts are income producing accounts. If you have a small account, your goal is going to be what? To increase your account size. So you can trade what? You can trade bigger size, one trade, one shot, done for the day. This is the ultimate goal. And this is where we are right now. Uh, at 10th, at one tenth of the size of the classic e mini contract, micro e minis require less cash to enter the market with lower margin. Uh, you have the flexibility to build positions with this. And I have an example for you. Uh, less people will blow up their accounts. Last year, last year, there were 375 hedge funds that have gone broke. You're talking about hedge funds that have gone broke. A lot of traders have blown their trading accounts. A lot of traders have blown their trading accounts. I have had, I've, I've done some pro bono, I have to admit, I've done some pro bono last year. I had some traders that have been with me in the trading room, have quit the trading room, uh, I don't know the reason why, and then they email me saying that, oh my gosh, they blew their accounts, what are they gonna do now, okay? They only have very few, mo very few uh, money left in their trading account. So because they were prior members of the trading room, I gave them a chance to be in the trading room for two extra months for free to try to build their accounts back up. And right now they have grown their account and they signed up for the trading room. Okay. Uh, these are the types of sizes. I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar. Um, MES is the micro and mini. MNQ is the micro um, mini uh, NASDAQ. Uh, MYM is uh, the micro uh, Dow and M2K is the micro uh, micro Russell uh, we're gonna get to that Dan uh, no they're less okay I'm gonna share with you uh, so um, one tick in uh, MES is a dollar 25 okay and a point is five bucks now because my methodology of trading, I don't look at two or three ticks. I, I'm not, I'm not getting it. I'm not getting up in the morning to make two or three or five ticks in the market. Okay, I, I'm not into the tick business. Uh, I have been trading long enough <laughs> to decide that I'm going for uh, that I'm going for full points. Okay, I'm not going for ticks. I'm not getting up in the morning for that. I, I would rather get a job somewhere else. Okay, where I could get. <laughs> where I could get a paycheck. I, I wouldn't get up for a tick, right? Uh, so we trade for points. And I'm going to share with you the portfolio and the trades that we took in the trading room. Timestamp. I went on the mic, called them, traded them, okay? Okay. Um, let's continue. Uh, we're going to get to that, Dan. Um, I have a slide for that. Uh, Thinkorswim has a, uh, I, I, uh, Thinkorswim is four bucks. You shouldn't be worried about commissions. Guys, if you're worried about commissions, you shouldn't be trading. It's not a lot. I'm going to share with you why. And I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do and what I do with my traders. Okay. Trade station has, uh, has, uh, uh, um, by very little, um, a, a cheaper rate. Anyways, you have the flexibility to build positions. Okay, you have that flexibility. Day trading, swing trading, and position trading, right? Depending on the stop, right? What is the number one cause of stop outs? You put your stops too tight. Why? Because you don't have the capital, right? So because you don't have the capital, you don't really want to risk too much, but you want to make a lot. So when it comes to expectations, everybody wants a Bentley but can barely afford, uh, 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 afford, okay? 
So that's, that's how trading is all about. Uh, so with, with the micros, you have the opportunity to scale in and out of positions. I have traders in my trading account that are trading $50,000 accounts and up, and they're trading micros because we have the luxury to scale in and out and play. And if it goes against us, we add. And if it rips up, uh, we add some more based on technical ads, add and reduces. We play with these micros like there's no tomorrow. So what is scaling in? It is number one, a training strategy. And number two, it is a trading tactic. It is a technique that gradually increases and or decreases the size of the trade day trading or swing trade and investment positions, right? So you don't, you, you, you don't only build positions in swing trading or investing. You could do this in day trading. Day trading is no different. So when you're playing with uh, uh, swing trading, basically you're playing with higher time frames. Why not apply the same strategies that a lot of investors and a lot of swing traders are applying? Why not apply it to day trading? Scaling into a position is also called averaging in, okay? Now, careful here because I, I don't scale in when the trade goes against me just to, you know, try to get a better average. It's not like I'm trying. So I, if I see the price plummeting, water falling lower, I don't just don't, don't, don't just jump in just because I think that, hey, perhaps it's going to go higher. No, I execute technical buys, okay? Technical, based on technical analysis. I just don't buy randomly. It's just like hopping in a trade for long or for short, okay? So that's called a, a falling, a, a catching a falling knife. I don't do that, okay? Uh, it involves setting a risk amount per trade. We talked about this yesterday. So your budget, uh, for your total exposure to the trade, then committing portions of that budget incrementally. So when you're building a position, you can see, so basically the chart pattern is going to tell you whether that chart pattern is prone to a position building or if it's really, I'm going to get all in. Okay. So the chart pattern is really predicting how you're going to handle price and where, where you are going to add where you are going to place your stop, where are you going to take profit. So the chart is telling you everything. The chart speaks to you. So when you look at a chart, it's just like looking through a magazine, okay? Um, all right, let's continue. It involves setting a risk amount per trade, like I said, for your total exposure of the trade, then committing portions of that budget incrementally. This can be seen as one dollar cost average or a form of risk management, which is investing a portion of our allocated risk on an early trading signal without the risk of investing your whole trade risk amount. Okay? Scaling out of a position can be seen as what? Averaging out. Averaging out. Especially when you look at a chart and when you see that you have a, two or three targets lined up, it's great to take some of the pressure off. Bank some bucks. I have a rule. My number one rule is I take half, okay? When I scale in, I take half at target one. And I'm in the trade with only half of the position left. When I achieve my target one, I raise my stop at a technical level so that my price is locked in at or close to a break-even price. I still need a, if I'm long, I still need a support level. I'm not just going to put it at break-even because my, you know, I just feel like putting it at break-even. So everything needs to be lined up technically on my charts. When I reach my target two level, I trim another quarter of my remaining half position. And I bring my stop up. I lift my stop up again, right? And this way I trail into, and these are technical trades. This is something that we teach in our class. So once the trade is reaching first target, you start liquidating some of your positions incrementally. You're booking gains. Pressure off, you're happy, right? 
you're not stressed anymore. I mean, don't tell me you're not stressed when the trade goes against you because I'm not going to believe you. We had that conversation yesterday. Like nobody likes when a trade goes against uh, themselves, right? Uh, can be used at an add and reduce technique. And I'm going to show you uh, in a second. Uh, and actually, we're going to ha be having a class. Uh, it's called Intelligent Stop. And the class is this fall. It's going to be late fall with advanced and this is a more advanced so this is for traders that already know how to trade and this is like the finesse okay the finesse you know that little thing that you're missing and it's going to make you way better than your any average trader so at target well like i said the trader will sell a portion of the trade will scale out a portion leaving the rest of the position intact if the index commodity, bonds, whatever you're trading pulls back from the target, guess what? On the next rotation, technical rotation, depending on the time frame that you took the trade on, so all these are uh, using multi time frame analysis, right? And multi time frames, you may do ads on separate time frames. Uh, we will be looking to add, right? The sold position, right? So where we took profit at target one, that half, right? We're adding it back in, right? With the stop and break even. Isn't that sweet? Okay, so we're going to have a class on that, like I said. Um, so um, scaling in should be technical and not executed randomly. So there is a lot, a lot, a lot to do with technical. I see a lot of traders that are just averaging in whatever because they want to bring their price down and it's, it, it, it ends up in a disaster. One thing, uh, yes, uh, Jolie, it is available. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to send it out tonight and I don't know if it's going to be available, but definitely uh, uh, tomorrow or into the end of the week. Micros are not for scaling. We have to get that straight. If you want to scalp, you can scalp your, you know, your um, full size contracts uh, because it, when you, when you're scalping, you're definitely having very tight stops. The problem that I have with scalping is that you're going to incur more losses than you are going to incur wins. Okay, and at the end, even your winning trades are, and your account is going to decrease in size because guess what? Your broker is going to be super happy that you're executing click, 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 and he's making all the money and you're working <laughs> your butt off <laughs> to make money. And in fact, you're donating. it. So scalping is for momos and for small targets if you want to do them. You have to use, you have to have a laser sharp precision. And um, I, it's truly a method of trailing, trading that I don't really recommend. I've done it for about eight years, nine years. And uh, after you do it for so long, you're consumed and you really want to navigate to a little bit higher time frame because, you know, if you're doing this for a living, you know, you really don't want to, you know, scalp your way into retirement, okay? The smaller the risk, the higher the odds of stopping out. Just remember this. Uh, this is the reason why most small account holders blow up their accounts. They penny themselves to death. For example, and Dan, this is for you, commissions on micro and mini SMP is $4 round trip with the thinkorswim platform. So basically what you need to do is make one point in order to make the commissions. The methodology that I teach my traders and the methodology that we, uh, uh, that we trade by in the trading room is going for way more than one point. We're looking at four, eight, 10, 20 points, when we're talking about the mini SMP for, uh, for YM, we're talking about, I don't know, 40, 60, 90 points and up. So you can see that I don't have any concern for, if you know how to trade, you're not looking at a tick. You're not, you're not happy if you're making three ticks in the market. Okay. Um, all right.
Let's move on. My conclusion is that micros are a great source of income. You can use micros, not only these uh, e-minis, okay? Not only these e-minis, but you can use micros in gold. It's a dollar a point. It's a dollar a point. So last night, if you wanted to take the trade, you would have made 50 bucks if you wanted to trade the micro. Just by attending this free webinar for an hour and a half or two hours. So two hours, 50 bucks. It's more than you had before the webinar. Does that make sense? All right, here's an example. Uh, if you remember in May, and this is a trade that we've done in the trading room, okay? If you remember in May, and this was before, before the micros, but this is something that you can do with micros. Do you guys ever dream about buying the dip? Do you guys know what it takes to buy the dip? If you do, this is how you do it. And we did it live in the trading room. Okay. Hey, Ronald. All right. This is how we do it. Okay. This is NASDAQ. You could see the date right here. This is May 3rd, 2019. All right. We had the market lower here. By the way, we didn't short. We waited for this drop. Why? Because the market shot up right out of the gates, right? And usually I don't trade in the first five minutes. I don't call a trade in the first two or five minutes. Look what it did. It, first of all, it went down and then I call this the slingshot, okay? So it did the slingshot setup. So it broke the mini support zone here and also from the overnight trading session, it pulled in and then it went straight up and then it collapsed. The narrative is not important, whether it was the tariffs or whatever it is, I could care less what it is, okay? So here it is, I called it live in the trading room. This was a buy at 7,700. And I said, I'm gonna buy one lot or one contract. Depending on your account size, everybody can decide, right? If you have a small account size, you're gonna take a contract. You have a wider account size, you're gonna take a lot. And a lot can be composed from two or five or 10 or 20 uh, contracts. My buy was here at 7,700. You could see the number on the uh, right-hand side, 7,700. This was the buy right here at 7,700. Okay, this was the buy. Notice when the buy was, was rather late in the day, was at 11 o'clock, right? So remember this, 7,700. Why did I buy at 7,700? Why? Because this looked like a waterfall. What do you think everybody was doing here? They were waiting for what? For a sell. Look at this, went back up. Look at this sell setup right here that occurred. 15 minute sell. This is a 15 minute sell right here. A lot of traders got chopped because it went for a brief moment down and then it ripped to the upside, right? See, my buy order was here at 7,700. Why did I buy at 7,700? And every trade that we take, we discuss in the pre-market, both alternatives, bullish or bearish. Why did I buy at 7,700? Because it was a huge, it had a huge confluence zone. It had dynamic support. It had minor support from prior price action from a double top action, right? So it was a double whammy for me right here at the 7,700. Uh, I typed into 7,700 level right here because you can see it here at 78. And this line is right over the number. So I just wanted it to type it right here. This is the 7,700. So where did I buy it? I bought aggressive off minor support. Okay. And we teach in class why minor support is more important than major support or resistance. Yep, that's right. Minor support reacts better to price than major support or resistance. Next slide. We added one lot at 7011 at a technical reversal. Down, remember we bought it at 77 just because it was from a daily chart. And by the way, this, is, this was a day trade. Okay, this was a buy the dip day trade. Okay, um, we added one more lot at 7011 
at a technical reversal. Okay, and this was on a 15 minute base, right? On a 15 minute base, we bought it there. We bought the first contract or lot on a five minute base. We added, right? We added on a 15 minute base. So you have to know how to juggle all these time frames. If you don't know how to juggle these time frames, this market is not for you. Volatility is not for you. This is what this strategy is all about. Now the average is 7.005.5. I'm going to share with you the averages. Okay, just follow along. Okay, this is a technical rotation off of the 15 minute chart and that represented the ad. The next ad was one hour based and it was a technical one hour rotation right into minor resistance. This was a do or die here, okay? But it triggered and we added one more lot or contract at 77.27 and our average was 77.12.75. Yes, Susanna, it is. Four hour chart. Hey, we're going into the overnight trading session. We were still in the trade. Okay, so we initiated the trade at 11 a.m. Eastern as a day trade, as a buy the dip. And guess what? Guess what? We added one more lot at a four hour rotation at 77.47 in the overnight, okay, in the overnight trading session. So it triggered, I think it was like seven or eight o'clock at night. Seven or, eight uh, seven or eight o'clock at night. Look at the move higher. This doesn't come from trial and error, okay? This comes from deep market knowledge. Years spent studying the market. Last ad, 7,800 based on a daily rotation. Breakdown, shakeout, doji, rotation, up. Our target was 7,880. This was an example of a trade that has originally started as a possibility to scale in on a dip and not a rip. Small accounts can now participate in these kind of volatile markets and take advantage of these strategies via micro minis. Here's the math. First, we went long at 7,700. We added at 7,711. We added at 7,727. We added at 7,747. We added at 7,800. How many of you guys in here know that you can add and reduce as the trade works in your favor? You're locking in profits while you're adding more. You're locking in profits as you're adding more. Many of you know that you may only do that if the trade goes against you. Well, I have a surprise for you. You can do this with better odds when the trade is ripping higher. Our target was 78.80. Our profit was 140 points times five lots, five ads. Whether you do it via lots or you do it with contracts, let's consider a contract. If you would have taken this trade, 2860, 2860 bucks in one day, in one day. All it took is from 11 o'clock to 11 o'clock at night to make this money. All right, um, let's discuss, uh, and, and of course, this is another example of a micro. I just wanted to show you the buying power effect, $693 right here, buying power effect. One contract, 100 bucks. 100 bucks with one contract, micro, m and &E &E This is when you know what the heck you're doing in the market because you need to know market. You need to, if I wake you up at night, you have to be able to tell me where did S&P close and if it's trading on support or if it's trading in a confluence area. You only have four indices. It's not your, like you're trading 6,000 stocks where you need a scanner. You're trading four indices. You better be sure that you have to know at every single time of the day where they're trading and what they're doing so you don't miss any other opportunities Opportun a missed opportunity is missed money. So the potential is huge, guys. Even if you trade micros, it adds up fast. You're using micro minis, right? Your goal for small accounts, try to make average 
$100 a day. I'm not saying you're going to make $100 every day. You're going to have losses. But if you average within a month, within a quarter, $100 a day, that's $500 a week. That's $2,000 a month. That's $24,000 a year. Even if you use it, learn how to trade and have this as a supplemental income. Listen, you're going to look... I offer a class. Do you think that you're going to know everything once you're, you have the class all wrapped up that I teach in a week? No. Your head is going to spin after a week. There's so much information that I provide in the class. Your head is going to spin. It's going to take you three months in order to absorb everything. And then you're going to go like, oh my God, it makes, so sen it makes sense. Okay? It makes sense. All right. Uh, this is our track record. Uh, 2017, when we started the trading room, 2018. In fact, we started, we started with a signal service. And because uh, uh, we had the market volatility so bad and um, hit the market so bad and the, fa the uh, price action was so fast paced, I did not have time to type in the trade right? The parameters of the trade because the price was long gone. So I decided, okay, trading room it is, and we're going to trade live. Okay. All right. So that transitioned into a trading room. Uh, we also have the results for 2019 and this is per contract. These results are per contract. So if you took all my trades with one contract, th these are your results. Okay. These are your results. And by the way, we do have a performance portfolio right there. I took a snapshot of this month's portfolio so you guys can see. It's like, okay, what is she doing? How many trades is she taking a day? It's like, all right, these are the trades that we took this month. Okay, these are the trades that we took this month. All of them were long. These, is, these are the entries. These are the stops. These are the targets. We have nothing to hide. Absolutely nothing. Show me a trading room that does the same thing. Because I would like to join it. I, I, <laughs> I would like to join it. You know what? I, I would love to. Tell me, someone to tell me what to do. Somebody to teach me what to do. I would love it. Somebody to trail the trade for me. I wish I had a trading room like I have when I started trading. These are the results per contract. It adds up 100, 100, 160, minus 200, 500, 500, 300, 200, 500. We're still in the trade. Okay. You can see today we entered. And by the way, the trade was called at 35. I got slipped to 38. So I'm posting the 38 number. Obviously, what's in my brokerage account. This is the stop. This target one, target two, target three. 84 point stop. You think that's a white stop? Use micros. I'm not going to put a tight stop if the support level is not sustained. So I'm putting my stops always below support levels because I don't want to get um, triggered by algos. Shake out. Ooh, I'm out. I don't want to do that. So I'm giving a lot of room to my stops. And in fact, this is, this is the whitest stop. I mean, you can see here that we have tighter stops here. This is a wider stop. Okay. And you can see the gold trade last night. Ta-da. Okay. Are you going to make money every day? No. Trading is, not, trading is all about averaging out. And trading, you should only have big wins, small wins, break-even trades, and small losses. All right? So how do you achieve these results? It's not impossible. It's hard. Trading is the hardest thing you're ever, ever going to do in your life. Ever, ever. Um, you have to stay focused. Watch basically four charts. If you're trading the indices, apply tons of discipline and patience. By the way, last Friday, I didn't have a trade. You saw that I don't have a lot of trades. I don't have a lot of trades. And yet I'm up $2,000 if you, 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 if, if you only take these trades only with one contract, okay, you have to apply my rules, straight morning and daily routine throughout, apply my trading plan, which is mapping out my trades and decisions before the New York trading session even opens. 
Today, I mentioned the target into 80 and 100. What did it do? It went to 80 and 100. And by the way, I didn't have a reaction time and it went straight up and then straight down. I'm still in the trade because I'm telling you, I didn't have time. I'm typing it in the room. I'm calling it alive in the room. I'm, the, I'm actually taking it. I'm the last one to take the trade. Okay. I'm the last one to take the trade. So that's why I probably got slipped because I took it at market. I usually, I definitely put limit orders where I want to see when I see my entries, but I didn't have time. I use the following indicators, the 20, the 50, and the 200 simple moving average. I use the 10 exponential volume, obviously, because I want to see market participation and price. Price is going to tell you what you need to do, right? Price is going to tell you what you need to do. Trading the open execution time frames. We talked about this. I use the nine uh, from nine thirty to ten o'clock. I use the one and two minute charts. Then I navigate to the five, and then as we're getting closer to ten thirty, I use the fifteen, and then I go back to the five. Okay, this is something that we teach in class. So, guys, you are offered, and the market is offering you offering you the keys to the kingdom. The keys to the kingdom. You can unlock profits in the market but you need to learn how to do it by knowing how to trade. And by the way, this is a recession proof job. If you call it a job, I don't consider it a job. I consider myself retired. I'm doing this as a pleasure because this is what I like doing. It's my life. It's my lifestyle. Travel. I travel with my truck. I mean, you're going grocery shopping and guess what? You have an alert that you set up in the morning. What are you gonna do? Take the trade. Like I said, last night I wasn't even home when the trade triggered. Everybody has a smartphone, everybody has a tablet. What does it cost you to put an alert where you need to enter the trade? Why leave money on the table? If the setup is there, just take the trade. This is the secret to consistency. You have to take all the trades that fit your trading criteria. By having market knowledge and by knowing how to trade, you will unlock any chart secrets on any time frame and on any instrument. Whether you're trading futures or stocks or forex or currencies via futures or options or cryptocurrencies. And by the way, cryptocurrencies respond really well uh, to, uh, to trading levels. It's not my preference. It's not my, um, um, I don't do cryptocurrencies, but there are many traders that do. And we teach you how to look at charts, how to read time frames, how to build your plan. We teach you a technical analysis from A to Z, from very basic technical analysis. Then we zoom you out to very advanced technical, uh, technical analysis skills. We teach you everything that you need to know, how to use it for day trading or swing trading and even active investing. We teach a class and we're starting on Monday. It is the Power Income Day Trading Futures class. I haven't ha I had this live class since January and most of the traders that have signed up for the class in uh, February, March, April, uh, and May, have uh, taken the class, have tuned into the recording, and they had extra bonus in the trading room because I did not have time to, uh, 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 to actually host the class because it wraps up an entire week uh, for me, and I don't have any free time, right? And uh, I would rather do something else with my free time. But I'm hosting it in May. I don't know when the next one, the live one, the next live one is going to be. I don't think it's going to be anytime, uh, anytime soon, like, I don't know, like Ju uh, Ju uh, uh, July. Uh, July, I'm busy. I'm going to Chicago. If you guys are in the area, if you want to say hi, I'm going to be at the Traders Expo in Chicago. I have two presentations there. I'm going to be with Rick Santelli in Back to the Future. It's a great honor to be on the same stage with him. So I'm very excited about that.
Uh, we teach you the most powerful day trading and also swing trading strategies and how to exploit them for above average gains. We teach the six major disciplines for every trade, entry, stops, targets, uh, trade management, position sizing, trailing, all the fun stuff. Market Temple, how to maximize your timing using key moving averages and other powerful indicators, how to maximize your gains and minimize your losses using proper money management techniques. Uh, market timing, we talked a little bit about market timing, precise timing, when to buy and when to sell, so important. Um, we also teach you market stages, uh, that's also very important. You're gonna know when the market is frothy. What's a frothy market? Market that is toppy, right? Market that is like extended to the upside. How do you know to read a toppy market and how do you know how to read a low, low market? Okay, we teach you that in class. Advanced technical analysis, analysis skills, in fact, all day is dedicated only to technical analysis. You're gonna have two hours, I'm gonna speak continuously within these two hours. Uh, but um, it is so much information your head is gonna spend, so, so much more. So not only that, you get the on-demand recordings um, and uh, you have the manual, uh, you have the platform layout, you have a workstation initiation, you have the risk chart, limited life retake. So whenever we do a class, you're invited. And by the way, very important, because we are a very small company, I only have a couple other people that are helping me with uh, uh, some admin stuff. Um, when you have a question about the market, you are, and let's say you take the class, trust me, you're not gonna be navigating uh, the internet surfing, trying to find an answer. No, you can call me. You have my phone, you have my email address, uh, you can text me. You can Skype me, whatever it is, however means you want to use to contact me. And then I mentor you for free. So if you have a question that was not answered, I never had that. I never had that. And I've had a lot of, uh, of, a lot of uh, students, lots, hundreds of students. I could say thousands of students that I had through the years. And not one had come back to me and said, hey, you know what, I had a question about this and that. Oh, I remember there were, uh, there were some questions last year with the volatility about some strategies that we have added to the manual because of volatile market environments, like buying the dip and all that fun stuff. Um, anyways, these are some of the reviews that uh, you could actually uh, see that people are super happy, super, super happy. And all of these guys that are here with the reviews, they are verified. They are our clients, not out of the blue saying, hey, I took the class and it's crappy. No, that is not a verified order. These are verified orders, verified with the purchase order, with the invoice, okay? And that's how we, uh, we do them. There are other websites out there that I'm familiar with. And actually we have legal, uh, our legal team is working and uh, it is going to um, um, charge them. And they're, um, I mean, they're, they're definitely gonna get in trouble for what they're doing uh, because what, it is so deceiving, they're bashing, literally, they're bashing traders uh, so they can sell their products, yep. Every trader on the market, they're bashing so they could sell their product. And uh, I actually had uh, actually had a um, had a discussion with some uh, some traders, and uh, I showed them how they're doing their scheme. So it it, it is a scheme, okay? Uh, and uh, it, it's bad for them. So uh, these are some of the reviews. I'm keeping them a little while here, so you could just uh, see you know what our traders are saying. Uh, Jose, he's a fantastic trader. Um, he just graduated, he just took his MBA. He's incredibly smart. He's in my trading room every day. He's not shy to ask questions. And he called me the Picasso of futures trading. So, um, I, and, and again, I developed a great relationship, friend, I mean, we're all friends in the trading room, okay? 
Um, also, Christopher, he's in the trading room, uh, top-notch education, education at high standard, more than I expected from an online, online course, uh, market analysis, blah, 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 you get the picture. Uh, James has been with Trade Out Loud for three years. The trading room is the highest, has the highest level of professionalism, no fluff, just 100% focus on trading. Yeah, we don't talk about, um, uh, okay, I know some trading rooms out there and the stories that I hear, is, they're just incredible, okay? So they fill out the time. I keep it professional. I'd rather be off the mic than start talking about what I saw at the mall last night. Okay, so if you're interested in the class, the next class is live live online is June uh, 17th, it's next week, June 17th to, uh, through the 21st, um, plus 30 days, you're gonna get live trading lab with me. Uh, the class tuition is $49.95, installments are available. If you're interested, shoot us an email to find out more about the class curriculum. My team is gonna send you a reply with uh, attachments, with links to all the information that you're gonna be getting in the class. And trust me, they're not going to follow back with you, okay? So if you want to contact us, fine. If you don't want to uh, get back to us, that's fine, okay? Uh, if you want to sign up or if you want to find out more information about the class, you can email us at info at tradeoutloud.com. All right, guys, questions. Uh, Dan, that's a great question. Why an alert and not, uh, and, uh, not a place order? Because an alert is issued before I need to place the order because I need to watch price action. I'm not buying blindly off a of support level or uh, off, of, off of, I don't know what level. So I need to see that the price is maintaining its momentum. That's why when I receive the alert, I log into my, like I mentioned earlier, I log into my brokerage account, whether that's at home or whether that's on my cell phone, because I wanna see the price fluctuation, I wanna see the volume, I wanna see the market conditions at that point. I also wanna see the other indices, how they're behaving uh, in relation to the index that I'm interested in trading. So I hope that answered your question. All right, guys, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, if you guys have any other questions, you can feel free to email my team at info at tradeoutloud.com. We will be happy to get back to you. And don't forget, tomorrow we have a full day, uh, day trading, open house. Hopefully the market is going to be a little bit more active than uh, the way it was today. Today we only had one trade. We are still into the trade. And uh, uh, by the way, just want to mention before I go, there is another setup that is being formed in, uh, um, in uh, uh, gold. This is the trade right here. And I need the price to trade over at least 40, 39.8 or 40 in order to start progressing higher back into targets into this high of 42, which was established in the overnight trading session. And... Uh, we're going to try to fill this little void right here into the 45 and 50s. Uh, this was all for today. Thank you so much for joining. I will see you guys tomorrow in the trading room. Thank you so much. Have a good night, everyone.